on the new SAT, my first instinct for pretty much any point of intersection question is going to be graph it. Use the Desmos calculator that's built in and just enter these things and see what happens. Now, I, I already did that for you. And um, we have a little bit of a problem. Uh, I don't see the green parabola, right? Where, where is it? And the, the big problem that you can kind of tell in the equation is that it's a plus 341. So we've got some big numbers here, but luckily we can zoom. And on my iPad, just, you know, with my fingers, I can kind of zoom around. And one thing that might help us is, remember the question, we are looking for possible values of x. So it's kind of a small range in the x, negative 15, 8. We should expect to see our answer somewhere kind of almost in the window that I have. So it's really up and down where I'm looking for that point of intersection. Um, so if I kind of squeeze it the right way, there we go. So we're starting to see some green. And I see a number here. Let's see. This is an intersection point. If I tap it, it comes up. Let me move that down so you can see it. Um, there it is. There's my intersection point, negative 15, 109. So does that work? Yeah. Well, we have negative 15 as a value. So the coordinate that goes with it is 109. I don't really care, but that is one of the x values. There's got to be another one somewhere. Here it is. And it is 11 negative 99. Now, we have a negative 11, right? So what's going on, right? How, how do we have, what's, why do we have a, a positive 11 and then a negative 11? What's, is that a coincidence? No, of course not. It's never a coincidence. The SAT makes all the wrong answers kind of for a reason. They choose them because they know we're going to mess up. Now, again, I would have just done this and my answer is obvious. I have no math, no potential for kind of a screw up unless I entered the equations wrong. This calculator is definitely the way to go. But because, you know, you might want to be curious, I'm going to show you the algebra and we'll see why choice B exists as an answer choice, a trap answer choice. So if I wanted to do this algebraically, I would need to merge these two equations. And they're not written in a way that really lets me do that easily. So what I would do first is rearrange this top equation by subtracting the 8x to the other side. So I would get y is equal to negative 8x minus 11. That's going to let me substitute this negative 8x minus 11 in for the y that's in the other equation. So using substitution, now I have 2x squared is equal to negative 8x minus 11 plus 341. Let's clean up this combined like terms very quickly. 2x squared is negative 8x uh, plus 330. Um, yep, just checking my work here. And then we want to subtract. We want to get everything off to the other side because we want to um, have a quadratic that we can solve. So I'm going to do that really quickly. We're going to get 2x squared plus 8x minus 330 is equal to 0. And we're getting closer to being able to solve. Now, what I would do here is divide everything by 2. So I can kind of just make all the numbers smaller. So uh, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Technically, we're dividing 0 by 2 as well, but that doesn't really do anything. So uh, it doesn't really affect it. So x squared plus 4x minus... Well, I'm going to use the calculator for this just because I'm afraid of screwing up. Uh, 165. Okay. Now I need, if I want to factor, numbers that add to 4 and multiply to negative 165. And look, again, if we have advanced graphing calculators, we can do this using graphs. We don't need to do factoring. If we have um, a more, you know, if we use Desmos, we can do it. But I have just this little rinky-dink thing, and I'm pretending that that's all I'm going to use. So I need to think of numbers that multiply to negative 165. So we are going to have an x plus and an x minus. And so I just kind of start by playing around with it. So 5 times what? 165 times 5, or divided by 5, is 33. So those aren't close enough. But 33 is an 11 and a 3, so we could do 15, 165 divided by 15 is 11. And so those multiply to 165, one of them needs to be positive, one of them needs to be negative. The 15 is the positive, the 11 is the negative, because 15 minus 11 is positive 4. And now we can see 
Where did choice B come from originally? Well, some people are going to get confused and do all this factoring and see the negative 11 and just pick that and forget that you have to you have to finish the job, right? This factor tells me that x is equal to positive 11 and this one tells me x is equal to negative 15 and because that's the answer, that's the one that counts. This one isn't wrong, it's just not an answer choice. Um, and so this is why. Uh, the reason I showed you all this algebra uh, is to show you why the traps exist, uh, choices like b, and how even if you're really good at algebra, one thing could go wrong and you could do all the algebra right, all the other parts of the algebra right, and then just get the question wrong because you jumped to a conclusion too quickly, lost a negative, something stupid that even the smartest people do. So your overall strategy on math has to be to decrease the chance of a careless mistake as much as possible. And even if you're amazing at algebra, you are not perfect. The calculator, on the other hand, as long as you enter everything right, is, is pretty much perfect. So we need to be able to do these things quickly, yes, but also we need to know that the answer choices are set up to take advantage of every mistake that we might make. So if we choose a way of solving, we want to choose it based on efficiency and based on accuracy. What is going to decrease the chance that we fall for one of those traps? And I think in most cases with points of intersection, the calculator is superior by a significant amount. So get used to being able to enter this stuff, being able to adjust the zoom, being able to find that intersection point just by looking at it.